Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video, thank you all the members of the Patreons, make sure to subscribe and let's get into it guys. I I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't do any data mines video during the dev servers, I was waiting for everything to be showed and, you know, looked around, poked around, uh, so that I can actually make a, a more dynamic type of video that I'm trying to change a little bit on those types of videos, okay? So first of all, thank you Washida for always doing these type of things, Abby, of course. Uh, they always do this type of thing uh, that helps a lot the community to know what is changed because a lot of the things they're not really um, in the change logs, you know, like a lot of the things. So uh, yeah, they normally just poke around and see directly what have changed in the dev servers and in the live servers and everything like that. So thank you, Oshida and Zabi. We'll leave the link for the Reddit posts in the description and let's get going, guys. Uh, so we're going to be a little bit different today. Uh, we're going to talk about the main things that I already didn't cover, okay? So, for example, uh, the F-14 having extra external fuel tanks, the F-16 having external fuel tanks. I already covered that in other videos, so I'm not gonna add this type of thing in the data mines because I already cover it, of course. But there are some things that I didn't cover that were found. So the first one is an interesting one, is for the T-80UD. So you can see on the screen right now that the T-80UD will actually be a GE Premium for 9,270 um, Gs, right? So uh, I was wondering, I mean, of course, uh, you guys probably knew already that because um, for the dev server, a content creator gets these uh, these tanks and stuff, so I cannot know if it was a pack or not. So yeah, there you go, the price of the T80 UD. The second thing is, um, of course, the MH60, the Blackhawk DAP, that actually got some of the new guns, the GAU-19, the LR-30, and the minigun, the 134, right? So uh, I didn't cover that in the, devs, the, the dev server, but... Uh, of course, the dev server was already uh, closed, it, and yeah, these the Blackhawk got that uh, those machine guns. Okay, uh, the third thing, uh, the next thing, is that the SU-27, uh, like I showed in one of the videos, um, has a unique RWR. So um, I don't know what exactly this means, but uh, according to what I saw, uh, I think it's just meaning that. Indeed, uh, in the game, uh, in the dev server, the only one that had the proper SPO-15 inside the cockpit or the proper RWR inside the cockpit was the SU-27. Uh, I don't know if you know that, but uh, the SU-27 had a proper modulation of the RWR inside the cockpit when you are flying, for example, for an SB match or something like that. Uh, then we have some changes to the RWRs, uh, some interesting changes. All of those RWRs starting from the KJ-8602 until the APR-39 AV-1. We include the Berioza in there, some others. There's a lot of RWRs for many, many aircraft. They basically included the RDI, the RDY, the PS-37A, the PS-46, the PS-371's uh, radars um, when launching. So it has basically identifications on those RWRs and not going to appear as a question mark anymore, apparently. So that's pretty cool. Um, there are some other changes to radars with the designation lock change to BVR lock, uh, like you saw there. Many of these radars were changed to see that as well. I don't know how that like, is in the game, but still it is pretty interesting to see. The next one is a very odd one. The copy radar. The radar of the SU-39 actually got a, an added BVR lock in TWS and acquirement locks. So... Yeah, uh, it is a little bit changed, the radars, all the radars are a little bit changed to be the, to use the new mode, you know, um, of automatic change of mode, you know, so if it's high PRF mode or low PRF mode and it needs a high PRF mode or it needs a low PRF mo mode, the radars will automatically change, something that you had to do and you have to do ma manually in the live server right now, right? So there are some changes there, it might be just that. Uh, but also, it makes you wonder if they are going to add the R-77 for the um, for the SU-39 when that thing is added to the game, when the R-77 is added to the game, right? Another thing about Raiders is that uh, Chef actually got 
uh, an interesting thing. Um, added a radar profile to the radar itself, right? So to the chef itself. So it is pretty interesting that they are doing this. Uh, that's why probably the chef was so, you know, um, effective in the dev server. I think that's why. So, yeah, maybe it will be a little bit more buffed just to make sure that the other, like, types of, you know, uh, like, missiles are not that powerful, right? And then we have uh, this, uh, some changes to the Raider missiles. All the Raider missiles basically in-game uh, got a new coding on it. They are all a lot stronger. There are some Raiders that also are a lot stronger in the power. And also, uh, these missiles, they got a severe increase in some of the cases in the lock range that you can actually lock targets. So, for example, the Sparrow missile was severely increased uh, to like 70 kilometers or something. So, it's, it's kind of crazy how they increased that. I don't know how realistic that is because, according to most sources, the numbers that we already saw in the game were already con like correct for the seeker ranges, so I don't know, but still, I think it will make uh, a lot of these missiles a little bit easier to do and a lot more, just a lot more arcadey on the range that you can fire the missile. Not that it changes too much, but uh, because the other dynamic range will still dictate if you are launching the missile or not, but it might help in these or other cases, you know. Um, so yeah, then we have, of course, I already covered this, but it's good to, to show to you guys the magic buff. Of course, you can see uh, the main difference between the older magic and the newer magic. The Finn's AOA, it was severely increased um, about two times as much, and the delay for the guidance started a lot sooner. So it means that the missile is turning a lot more it's maintaining the 35 g's a lot more so yeah very very good change and of course we have the phoenix as well uh which also received this type of buff with um a fin aoa of the missile uh basically being increased to almost twice as much as it was in the live server before right so yeah amazing stuff of course i already showed that uh in other videos but uh just for you to know that yes the phoenix and the magic uh, are indeed with a hefty bug, like a really big buff, um, which makes those missiles a lot more competitive. Uh, but yeah, guys, basically this is it for the more interesting things. There are some leaks here and there. Apparently, for example, the Leopard 2A4M is denied. Uh, I might talk about these in another, another video, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, there are some other things, but just minor things. And for now, we just need to wait. The dev server has you know, closed, and we are close to the patch. So yeah, see you guys in the next one. Make sure to subscribe 